Hey guys, it's Dylan right again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you very much for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to invite you to subscribe to the channel because it's really gonna help me in growing this community. And today I'm really, really excited because I'm gonna start looking into ray tracing. I barely got a new computer. This new computer has an RTX 2080 video card, which is actually gonna allow me to run ray tracing in a version of Unity that is experimental. So I wanna show you how we can get that version of Unity installed what are some of the components, some of the issues that I'm having right now, and how we can do, how we can fix some of those problems as well. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. Hey guys, it's going to Dilmar again, and welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to do a little bit of recording and show you the ray tracing scene that I've been working with Unity. The, the reason why I wanna show you this is because I, I just got a new RTX card and Unity has a, a basically a repository where they're doing a lot of experimentation with the new ray tracing functionality that comes in the new in the newer GPU. So the one that I'm running right now is an RTX 2080. And this repository that Unity is providing, it's I'm gonna be honest, is is very buggy. So and it's probably because it's experimental and, and they say in here that it's experimental and they're working on it. And so that's what I want to give you, you know, a little bit of a warning because I'm I'm fighting it right now and I'm trying to get things to work and they they kind of work, but I think they they want you to Unity wants you to use a specific version. So I I did download the latest drivers oh, from you know from NVIDIA. I got all, all of it up to date. Unfortunately, I have Windows Home, so that's what I'm downloading, Windows 10 Business, which will give me the release, basically a higher version of this build. So you want to make sure that, that you download the proper Windows version, and I think that has to do with the DirectX version that comes with the, with the latest version of, of Windows. So make sure that you do that, and that's what I'm doing right now, and I'm hoping to do a new video tomorrow about that. But I can show you what I have so far. So I downloaded the, the latest drivers, like I told you. I downloaded, the uh, I'm downloading Windows 10. And there are multiple ways to do this. You could, you could either clone this, and I'm gonna put this in the description of this video. You could clone it and basically run it once you clone it. Or you can download one of the releases that they have in here, and they basically tell you in here that there's a zip file that it's in this link. So if we go to that link, show you what they provide. So Unity is providing you with basically a compressed file and, and this contains a version of Unity that is customized for running ray tracing. So this is experimental. So instead of releasing it for everybody, they release it for, you know, as, a, as an experimental version of Unity. And then they also have a Windows standalone support and these two are required so let me show you what i did so that you you don't have to go through the hassle so once you download the experimental you're going to get a zip file like that in the windows standalone it's going to be also a zip file so i basically uncompress those two and i put them under program files and you you can put them anywhere you like but i like to keep things consistent so i already had a unity version i didn't want this one to override that and you can also use a unity hub so what I did is I moved the Unity experimental version to a folder, just like you see right here. And this is the one that I that I basically extracted from the zip file. Once you do that, the other thing that I did, I went into data and I created a folder called playback engines. And they will tell you here what you need to do. You need to basically get the Windows standalone support, which is what I just showed you. And then make sure that you have a folder created under playback engines and you can see that I have that. And then if you double click on that, I should have the folder that I uncompressed from the second zip file, which is named Windows Standalone Support. And then basically this has the Windows Standalone Support because it doesn't work with the, the basically the current one that comes with the, with the Unity version. So once you, once you have that going, you should be able to create a new project. I, I have a few issues still. And when I did it through basically double clicking the, on the Unity DXR, it didn't really work. So what I did is I, I hook up the Unity Hub. So I double click on the Unity Hub. Once I double click on the Unity Hub, you can go and basically, you know, go to go to installs and then locate your, your 
installation. In my case, this is the one that we, you know, that we extracted. So I connected it. Once I did that, I went into project and then created a new project. And then once I once I created a new project, it allowed me to use the template that they provide out of the box. So it still gave me some errors, but it worked. Once I once I created a project, I was able to just basically open the scene. So which is what I'm gonna show you now. So if I click on that scene, it's gonna take a while to import everything and create the project. So be patient when you're doing that. I, I did it in advance because I didn't really want you to wait, but all you have to do is just basically name that project. And then once you name it, it'll create it and it'll, it'll look like this. And you're gonna see that I'm gonna get a lot of errors. And I think that's because of the, and you're gonna get this thing pop up. So what I did is I just basically close it. It'll still keep it open. So yes, it is very buggy, and, and that's one of the things that I think by installing the, the pro version of Windows is gonna fix it. Also with the specific build number, and so you'll get a lot of errors from Unity. You can still work with the scene, so, and I believe it's working well. I have ray tracing. It's gonna tell you that this platform doesn't support ray tracing, and I, and I think that has to do with, you know, like I was saying, some of the errors with Windows. So we're gonna ignore that. Just pretend that everything is working. And in fact, we could we could just yeah, we just basically clear it. I think it's they're gonna show again. So so what I want to show you is the scene that the Unity built for us. And this is what comes out of the box. I can go into the scene view, and we get there's some really cool features. And and to be honest, I I really haven't messed with a lot of the features. All I know is that the scene is basically supporting ray tracing. And I'm gonna be playing more with this and see how it really works. But you have basically a cube map around, and that's what we're seeing, basically a big city of the cube map. And that's so that we can get better lighting. The The other thing that they have is, you're, you're probably familiar with the rendering settings if you watch some of the videos that I, that I posted on HDRP. So, so these new component for ray tracing, also it's built on top of HDRP, which is the high definition rendering pipeline. So that's what you see here. We have a volume and I've been explaining to you how these work. In fact, in the previous video that I, that I did, I, I show you how, how to add an HDR, HDR ISKI. I just didn't have a QMAP, but this is a good example of, you know, when you'll have a QMAP and what it'll do for you. So, and then this, they have ambient occlusion and, and some of these effects that I, that I show you how to use. But the thing that is, is basically specific for this video is the ray tracing environment. And in Unity, what they did is they added all these different checkboxes. Like if I go in and hit play, you'll see what's gonna happen as we check some of these checkboxes. So if I want to enable a specific ray trace ambient occlusion, I can enable it and you can kind of see the ray tracing it's getting applied. I can see that the ambient occlusion goes away and then basically it gets enabled. And it also happens to be setting those in the inspector. So it's basically doing the same thing if I click here or I click here. And you can change some of the settings and, and I'm gonna say that again, I'm not very familiar with this because this is very new to me as well. But I wanna show you how this, you know, what it's doing right now. I can also do ambient occlusion filtering. They also have ray trace reflections and you can see how those are, you can see big changes in the scene by just enabling and disabling that. And also if I do reflection filtering, we're getting some different changes in the scene. It's also changing the reflection filtering in the inspector on the ray trace reflections. And also lastly, the ray trace shadows. And I don't see a lot of changes on this and I'm, I think this has to do with some of the, you know, the issues that I'm getting on the console. So the other thing that I can show you is because this is using, this has a script already associated with the, with the, with the camera, which is called the, I believe it's part of the free camera, and you can, you can basically use the AD to navigate around. I can use page down and page up, and I can go out, and you can kind of see that. We can get we can get around. I can also uh, hold my right click to go in. So so this is cool. So if we want to see you know how the shadows look like and how some of these things are affecting, kind of see how that is affecting the scene. So I mean that's that's kind of basically a very very high level of of how this works. I 
I haven't played too much with this scene just yet, but I plan on, on doing a lot more videos on ray tracing, specifically with you know adding some high definition 3D models. I, I have a car, a couple of cars that I purchased from a 3D a 3D artist, and I'm gonna be showing how those look like, and and they're very very high quality. So I'm hoping that with some of those components, and then also using the ray tracing and getting it to work, we're gonna be able to see some of the power that comes with ray tracing. And just stay tuned because I'm gonna be posting a lot more videos about it. And and again, thank you very much, guys. Alright guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Also, be sure to check out GameDev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers. If you're starting now or if you're an advanced game developer, they have resources for you. Also, find me in Patreon where I'm basically posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes. I'm also posting early access to source code and a lot more different content. So, thank you very much, guys.